Welcome friends. A lot of people have been asking for a studio tour. So let's do a studio tour. It's right here behind me. You can just see the open doors. Let's go out and take a look. So this is it. This is the studio. So I'll back up a little bit. You can see it's in a shed in my backyard. <laughs> nothing too crazy, nothing too large. Um, and inside is the kitchen. Look at that. So as we come in, you're going to see the A camera. Uh, that is a red dragon. And I've got that on top of Lasmandi Porta Jib. Um, this is a tool that is absolutely amazing for doing food in a studio. And then over here um, is camera number two, also a red dragon and a selection of lenses. Now this camera, this is a DJI Osmo Pocket. Um, and I haven't used it on the show yet that you've seen. I started taking this on travel gigs um, where I'm elsewhere shooting for my day job. And we took it to Mexico City and we shot a bunch of street food stuff with this camera. So I'm interested to find out how it turns out after the edit is done. And you'll see the Mexico City street food stuff coming up uh, probably at, towards the end of September and into October. Now, this is the full studio setup. Um, you can see pretty much everything from this angle. Uh, and the first question that I want to answer, because I know that everybody's going to ask this question, is does YouTube pay enough that you can have two red cameras and, you know, probably $120,000 worth of cinema lenses? And the answer is no, not at all, not even close. Um, the money that I make from YouTube doesn't cover my food costs. All of this equipment, this studio, everything that you're going to see is for my first job. Um, most of my life I have worked in film. I have worked on the advertising side of TV commercials, um, the production side of TV commercials. So we would, get the, uh, we would get the boards and then I would produce it or go out and shoot it for clients for TV. I've moved on from that. Um, probably about 2008, shortly after I started this channel, I started doing stuff just for the web with my own production company. And so brands come to me we come up with recipes and then we shoot the recipes and then we give the final videos and the photography that the client can then use in print and online, either YouTube on their own YouTube channel, on their own Facebook page, Instagram. And so that's the bulk of my business. And so everything you see is for that part of my business. Um, the Glenn and Friends YouTube channel is just me having fun. It's me trying out recipes where I don't have to be perfect, where I can fail, where I can experiment, and I can just interact with people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, because I gotta tell you, sometimes advertising and working for clients can be a little bit soul-sucking. Uh, don't tell them that I told you that, though. So, here we go. Um, the great thing about this jib arm is that I can move it around the studio and keep everything a nice, smooth movement. So pretty much this is the view that you always see of the studio. But I wanna show you a little bit more. So the setup is lit with these Kino Flow lights and the Kino Flow lights are a fluorescent light that is specific for filmmaking. It doesn't flicker at most frame rates and it has a really good color rendition, uh, much better than a regular fluorescent light. And I've got them hanging from the ceiling on this grid pipe. So I've got a grid um, crisscrossing the ceiling so that I can hang anything from above that I want to. I can hang lights, I can hang microphones, um, I can hang cameras if I want to do a straight down camera. Uh, but most of the time the camera is on that porta jib that I showed you earlier or the camera that I'm now pointing at. Off to the side, uh, there's a safe. Um, and in this safe, I keep my lenses. Um, lenses are worth a lot of money and you know, I just want to keep them safe. I've also got a lot of gels here and use gels for light manipulation. So anytime I want to sort of funky light something, um, I'll use these gels in conjunction with one of these larger lights. So this is a big LED light. Um, I use it quite a bit for top down. So when I'm doing client work, most of it, the camera is mounted up here and you're shooting straight down and there's just hands and there's music. Videos that everybody finds really annoying at this point, I think, although they get millions of views. So um, 
clients keep asking for them, I'm going to keep doing them. Um, you don't see them on my channel anymore. I did it for a little while to try it out, but I don't do it much anymore. And then of course back here um, are all the cupboards and the cupboards are filled with things. So you've got bins all through this one that have all of the kitchen utensils that I use, all of the spoons and whisks and ladles and cutters and serving and brushes, all of that sort of thing. Above the stove or the oven, stuff that I use for cocktails. And we used to do a cocktail series and I think we're gonna go back to that. Um, sort of the end of September, beginning of October, running through the holiday season. I'm going to do a lot of cocktails. On the ceiling um, is foam, soundproofing foam. So that, not to stop sound from outside getting in or stopping sound from inside getting out, but just to deaden the sound a little bit so you don't get uh, sound bouncing around in an echo. Sometimes um, studios can sound like an echo chamber and that's not good. Now my studio isn't as uh, put together and minimalistic as Marquez Brown Lee's, but on the other hand, it's not the complete chaos of Linus. Um, somewhere in between, and I'm not faulting either of those guys because everybody's got their own style and I'm sure they both know where everything is. Well, Marquez knows where everything is. Of course, over here there's even more cupboards and these are filled with glasses and jugs and things that I use. Um, this cupboard here, mixing bowls, plates, some things that I use for that. Down below here are cutting boards and over here you have pots and pans. Um, and on the back counter, stuff that I use on a regular basis. So I've got the food chopper, I've got a mixer, blender, the knives that I use. Top of the fridge, people notice what's going on on the top of the fridge sometimes, just at the edge of the video. And I'm, you know, I've got another blend tech and some more knives, just extra stuff that's shoved up there. And so just off to the side of the fridge here that you can't see from the front, I keep a bin of tasting spoons and tasting forks. And these are just mismatched spoons and forks. You get them at a restaurant supply store. Um, restaurant supply stores are where I get most of the stuff that you see in this kitchen. They are so much better than a mall kitchen store. You go to a mall kitchen store and you often buy stuff that doesn't work properly, um, has a brand name on it, and you're paying extra for the brand name or extra for the design, and the design often doesn't do what you need it to do. Go to a restaurant supply store where professional kitchens buy their stuff, and it's often so much cheaper, and it actually works. It may not look beautiful, but it's gonna do the job. It's going to improve your cooking. So these are spoons that I just buy in bulk, because you're always losing them. You use them once, you taste, you throw it into the dish bin. Um, I also keep back here a selection of vinegars, uh, thermometers, salt and pepper, anything that I need to grab really quickly that I can just come back here and grab that I don't need sitting on the counter. Uh, it's a bit of a cheat, but it's the way I need to do things. This is a freezer that's been modified to hold two to three degrees centigrade at all times, so just above freezing. And inside there I keep beer and soda water. Um, so oftentimes you'll see me grab off to the side and grab something out. And I have a video, a separate video that is all about how we carbonate water. So maybe take a look for that if you're interested. Over here is all of our equipment. And I shouldn't say all of our equipment, but some of my filmmaking equipment, um, all of the filters and follow focuses and dovetails and things for attaching the camera to tripods or sticks or wherever I need to attach the camera. I've also got audio gear and um, these are all cables. And over there I've got microphones and action cams and I've got some lenses for 35 millimeter and 16 millimeter film cameras that I use every once in a while. Not much anymore because everything is digital, but I still have those cameras. I still shoot a little bit of film here and there. Uh, light meters I've also got over here. And then down below here are more cables and lights. Now, over the last couple of years I've moved mostly to LED lights, but I still have a pile of incandescent lights. I've got dado lights, I've got Mizars, I've got lights from the 50s and 60s that um, don't see much use anymore, but they do have a quality of light that you cannot get today from an LED or a fluorescent. And where I want a really nice light, I will grab one of these lights from the 50s or 60s because they're just fantastic. Over here in this other corner, 
Over here, I've got, uh, I've got C stands. I've got lots of C stands. I've only got three sitting here right now, but down in the basement, I've probably got 25 or 30 more. C stands are great for um, putting up stuff if you want to modify light or putting lights on or grid cloth or all of those sorts of things. So when I'm doing close up for food photography for clients, um, there are days where you cannot move in the studio because there are C stands everywhere and I've got pinpoint lights. Um, where we may take hours to get a tiny little shot um, that most people probably don't notice that it took us that long to shoot it. I've also got a slider here so I can put the camera on and this gives nice even slidey movement back and forth. Um, works really well when you've got a nice heavy camera on it. If you've got a light camera, it doesn't work very well. That's on really thick, sturdy legs. I've got extra lights, I've got extra tripods, I've got extra light modifiers, I've got egg crates. So much stuff. And this is just in the studio. Um, I could probably take you down to the basement and show you the rest of the cooking gear. So this is an equipment room down in my basement. And I've got a table over here where I can spread out all of the ingredients, get everything ready to go, put together the trays so that when I take them out to the studio, everything is set up for that recipe. We've got a wine fridge. Um, we've got another fridge for holding ingredients that uh, I don't want to hold out in the studio for whatever reason. This mess back in the corner is a completely different studio set for the studio out there. So out in the studio, all the cabinets are this white, but I also have a full brown set that I can use as well. And we can just take off the doors, put new doors on, and it'll look almost completely different. Um, bit of a pain in the ass to do, but we do it from time to time. Now, all of these are filled with dishes. Um, all kinds of dishes for presentation, dishes for putting ingredients in, anything that I need to present to a client if they want to have a steak and they want to have a steak on a blue plate, I can show them dark blue plates, light blue plates, square blue plates, round blue plates, blue plates with a white ring around them. Uh, all of these cupboards are filled with those. And there's also some props in here as well. So if someone wants cookie jars on the back counter, I can put cookie jars on the back counter. Um, I can put little pieces of, uh, of fancy glassware. I've got props for Halloween and various things for different, uh, different celebrations throughout the year. So if a client comes to me and wants those things, I can put them in and I can make that studio look completely different than it does today or the one that you see on Glenn and Friends. These cabinets along this wall, and there's, there's quite a few, I'll show you the rest of them. Um, these are filled with kitchen appliances or cookware. So up here I have a whole bunch of different kinds of slow cookers, um, barbecue tools, and roasting pans. This one down below is filled with cast iron Dutch ovens, cast iron braziers, and a whole bunch of different kinds of, of ceramic ware for baking, either for cakes or casseroles. And of course this room isn't lit because I don't shoot in here at all. So up here I have uh, different surfaces for putting uh, finished product on or raw ingredients. I've got boxes for wine and beer that we need to ship different places. Uh, in this cupboard is just a mix of different types of spices and things that we use at various places. Down below here I have deep fryers, I have charcoal grills, I have coffee makers. Not sure what's in this one. Oh, uh, just various pots, extra pots, a pasta maker, extra blender, woks, uh, things for making bread. Down below I have extra mixers, vacuum sealer, extra woks, CO2 cartridges. Um, there's even a pressure cooker back there. I don't use the pressure cooker often. Uh, I think I've used it in maybe two videos and uh, I didn't really like it all that much. So you don't see it too often. This last one, um, so I've got stuff up here for the, the wine aerator and I have overflow cake tins. This last one is just filled with cake tins, uh, square cake tins, round cake tins, spring form pans, all of that sort of thing. And then this one down here, this last bottom one, whew, waffle makers, uh, three or four different waffle makers, countertop grills, uh, couple of different kinds of ice cream maker. I've got pretty much everything it takes um, to make the foods that my clients want.
um, and also to give me the freedom to play on Glenn and Friends. Let's go back out to the studio because I know that there's one more thing that you really want to see. And so I'm going to say the number one question I get over and over and over again is what's behind the counter? So here it is, the big reveal, what's behind the counter. The cooktop is right here, um, induction cooktop, and underneath it, it's just a garbage bin. So when I reach over and I throw stuff into the garbage, I'm literally throwing it into this garbage bin. Um, there is always an apple box back here. Um, apple boxes are probably the most underrated film tool there is. It's just a plywood box with holes in it that you can stand in different directions and you can stand on it, you can put the camera on it, you can sit stuff on it. Very important in filmmaking and I always have one or two stacked behind here so that I can access them easily. On this side, where I usually do the mixing, and you see me throw stuff under the counter, it's just a dish bin. All the dirty dishes go into this dish bin and then I can carry the dish bin inside to the house um, to do the wash up. So there's nothing really intriguing back here, just a dish bin. Underneath here are other bins that have pot lids. Um, I also have a bin right here that is filled with towels so that I can wipe off my hands and the countertop. So that's it. That's it for my studio tour. Um, thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoy all of the videos that we make. Please leave down in the comments anything that you want to see. Um, and I hope to see you again soon.